And this is a special one for us because this is our 100th episode. <laughs> Today for our discussion, and this is actually going to be a series. Let's talk about sex. <laughs> God invented sex, okay? So it is his design. He defines what sex is, not us. We have to properly define the process that God created, right? Like, okay, what was the process? How it's supposed to function? What piece goes with what piece? Hi, welcome back to another episode of Gata Talks. And this is a special one for us because this is our 100th episode. <laughs> so we have brought so many great topics and we are going to continue that trend and bring a very juicy topic, no pun intended, today <laughs> for our discussion. And this is actually going to be a series. So let's talk about sex. So many people have so many things to say about sex, what's appropriate as far as the sexual activity, what's inappropriate in regards to sexual activity. And as always, we want to go to God to see what he says about sex since he's the one that made it. So let's talk about sex. So as Shamiko just said, to begin this conversation, right, we have to properly define the process that God created, right? Like, okay, what was the process? How it's supposed to function? What piece goes with what piece? All that good stuff, right? So the Lord created the process of sex and we participate in that activity through our genitalia. For a man, that is your penis. For a woman, that is in your vagina. But the Lord didn't just design this process for any and everyone. It is housed under the covenant of marriage. So if you're watching this video, you're 14, you better stop it. Because <laughs> that is not the process it was designed for. So sexual intercourse is between a man and a woman involving genital content, contact with the insertion of the penis into the vagina. So that's how we know it's between a man and a woman. Because yes. a man has a penis and a woman has a vagina. So that is the design and function that God's intention was for sex. Yeah. And so let's see this even more. So one thing that we want to drive in early is that God designed sex. So it's not, I don't care what the, the Trey Saul said, he did not invent sex. <laughs> God invented sex, okay? So it is his design, he defines what sex is, not us. So in case you're wondering, or you, you know, not like, oh, well, is it supposed to be between a man and a woman? Well, let's see a principle that God placed um, forth in Genesis 1, chapter 11. No, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, pardon me, in the New King James Version. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. So using this principle, the tree whose seed is within itself, well, okay, let's sex ed review here, who has the seed? Men, sperm, comes from the penis. Okay, how is this seed fertilized? How does the seed grow in a woman's ovaries? The egg that comes from a woman. So we're seeing God designing with no mistake it is between a man and a woman, and that is how seed grows, and that's how we have all these people in the earth. Cool? Absolutely. Cool. So let's keep going in Genesis at the beginning and look at who was able to practice this thing called sex. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1 and look at verses 27 through 28 in the New King James Version, which reveals, So God created man... In his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, being the male and female, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So what we have to understand about Adam, he is a male, a man who has a penis. 
what we have to understand about Eve is that she is a woman and her genitalia era area is that of a vagina. So again, going back to what Donovan had explained earlier, sexual intercourse is involving the, genital the genitalia. And whenever we think of genitals, what do we think of? What do you think of when you hear genitals? You gotta be talking about penis and vagina. What do you think of? Gotta be talking about penis and vagina. That becomes very important because we're gonna go somewhere in another part of this series and I'm just gonna give you a sneak peek there is such thing called oral sex and anal sex. And we need to know, is this approved by God or disapproved by God? Sex involves the genitals. A mouth is not a genital. An anus is not a genital. But you know what is a genital? A penis and a vagina. So Adam had a penis, Eve had a vagina. He tells them, be fruitful and multiply. Although the word sex is not there, that is what he is expressing. And Eve was not Adam's girlfriend. Eve was not Adam's side piece. Eve was his wife. God pulled a rib out of Adam and formed Eve. She was a woman. He said, I'll call her woman. And then her name became, she was given a formal name, which is Eve. They were a married couple and God bless them to be able to go forth and have sexual intercourse so that they could be fruitful and multiply as Trey had us look at the scripture before I read this one that seeds are going to produce after its kind. So when his sperm enter into her body through the vagina going up into um, the area that it's going to travel to and a seed is conceived in order to form a baby, that's how that process happens. A woman has a womb, ovaries, all these things where that is able to happen. The man through his sperm and his um, scrotums and all of that has the sperm. Oh. <laughs> what's, what's... Scrotum is not plural. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, it's like, did she say scrotum? It's like, hmm. <laughs> so scrotums is not plural. It's scrotum. So actually, um, the men have penis and scrotum, correct? All right, and so in there is the sperm, right? In the, the testicles. The testicles, which okay. Contain the sperm. Which contains the sperm. Though, uh, Tramiel's not married. So uh, she, yeah. she living righteously. That's why she don't know this stuff. <laughs> you got that right. I don't know nothing about this. You want to explain this if yes. you're a man thing? So, <laughs> men have. Because I'm struggling. A penis <laughs> and testicles, which are contained within the scrotum, which produces sperm that travels through the urethra cord to impregnate a woman through her vagina, which then leads through the ova into her uterus through the fallopian tubes to connect with an egg that comes from her ovaries. That is sex ed 101. Right? Come on. Absolutely. So, I mean, here we're seeing, again, what we need to understand from this scripture before we go forward, Man, woman, man, penis, woman, vagina, married, can have sex with the genitals. Yes. The man's penis entering the vagina, nothing else. Go and ahead. we see this connection, right, by design, because what the Lord is saying is the process of sex is to be fruitful and multiply. Like, I, I created this process for you to bring forth children. The only way for that to happen is with a penis and a vagina. It can happen no other way. Right. The woman has to be impregnated. So that really, it's really key, and that's why we're kind of spending so much time talking about yeah. this, because this is the foundation. We're yes. only going to build from here, but we really have to understand that when God designed sex, it was to bring forth children. And the only way to do that is with a seed and an egg, sperm and an egg. You can't do it any other way. Now, Give you another sneak peek of a sneak peek. We're gonna talk about sex within marriage because that's the only way you're supposed to have it, how it is pleasurable and it is something, an enjoyment for a couple, for a married couple to have. But the, that's a side benefit. 
that's whipped cream and cherry. The reason why it was created is so that we would have a process to bring forth children. Because Lord, like, I'm not about to come down here and keep creating. <laughs> you and me. Like, that's inefficient. <laughs> Let's create a way for them to re reproduce after their own kind. Right. So that was why it was so key uh, for Trey starting us off in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. So now let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 through 24 in the New King James Version. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So, one of the things that's first highlighted in this is bring scriptural evidence to back up what Tremiko said, that Adam and Eve were married. They were not boo things, they was not yeah. cuffing, they were not boyfriend, girlfriend, <laughs> they were not in an entanglement. <laughs> <laughs> they were married. And so that process of sex was created for a married couple. Then there's the spiritual ap application of sex. They become one flesh. It joins your souls together, which is why you don't want to be participating in fornication because you out here joining your soul, soul ties to a bunch of different people. Mm -hmm. The process was to connect this husband who is a man, this wife who is a woman, to connect them to become one flesh so they would have a deeper connection than what casual sex brings you. Absolutely. So let's just see more of God really showing that sex was made for a man, husband, and a woman, wife. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 25 in the easy to read version. But Joseph did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and he named him Jesus. So, just the context, in case you don't know, Joseph married Joseph, the presumed parent by man, to be the parent of Jesus, which we all know, Jesus, God, the Father, manifested in the flesh. Mary, who was Joseph's wife, the mother of Jesus. So, the scripture is saying that Joseph did not have sex with his wife, Mary, until Jesus was born, because sex was made for a man, husband, a woman, wife. Exactly. Which leads us to go into this section that God really needs us to talk about. Sex is not between two people of the same gender. Sex is to be between two people that are married of opposite gender. And there's only two genders, male and female. And those are the only two that can be married in God's eyes. So we know we live in a society where people of the same gender are entering into marriages and covenants and things of that nature. Unfortunately, God does not recognize that. As happy as people are out here having these marriages and going to these weddings, God is not recognizing God's eyes because he is the one that instituted marriage and that was not his design for marriage. So he's not going to acknowledge or recognize anything outside of his design. He considers anything that is twisted from his original design as perverted. That's what twisting means. Perverting means to change the original order and intent of something into something it should not be. So what we're going to see in these next few passages is that two people of the same gender having sex and we can spill that over into getting married is considered by God an abomination and it should not be so. And what we have to understand, too, is when it comes to two people of the same gender having sex, there isn't a penis and a vagina. There's either a penis and a penis or there's a vagina and a vagina. So how does a vagina and a vagina or penis and a penis have sex? You now have to twist God's original design and pervert that and cause a penis to enter into some hole that wasn't intended to receive a penis. Namely, a mouth or an anus. Okay? So whether two people of the same gender are having oral or anal sex or people of opposite gender, gender adopt this perverted practice and, and involve themselves in this exercise, to God, 
it's all wrong. It's all sin. And we're going to see that even much more so in the next uh, episode of this series. But we're not going to go heavy into that right now. But I need to state that because we're going into this same gender sexual encounters that God is going to show us an abomination. So let's go to Leviticus chapter 18. And I'm going to read verse 22 in the easy to read version. God reveals here, men, you must not have sexual relations with another man as with a woman. That is a terrible sin. If you look at this in the new King James version or the King James version, he says it's an abomination. An abomination is something that is disgusting to God. He loathes it. It is something that he called, he considers more of an infraction of sin. It is above him hating something. Yeah. We have now graduated to the heights of abomination because an abomination is a greater, in God's eyes, sin than something that he hates. Yeah, so it's, it is not the same. So when everybody's just say every sin is the same, that it is, is not. unbiblical and that is not what God has said because right. uh, an abomination is worse. But as we see in the scripture, right, we can we already see the perversion based on the other scriptures we saw that sexual intercourse requires by design a penis and a vagina by participating in homosexual behavior. You now got to figure out a way. Well, sex was designed for a penis to go into a vagina. Mm -hmm. Like Jimmy said, two men got two penises. Yep. Where is the receiver? Exactly. Well, the other only other two holes that another man has is their anus or their mouth. Mm -hmm. So they adopt, they perverted the process in creation. What God's design was to be like, how can I use this man as a woman? Yeah, exactly. It is an abomination. And it is a perversion. And we'll talk about it later, but that's why you can then, as we start building out on this thing, it's okay, so how does this connect to the acts in which a man and a woman, a man and wife, a husband and wife can participate in their own sexual activity? Well, you shouldn't be patterning yourself after someone who created a behavior yeah. to pervert the original design yeah. of that behavior. And God just put this in my mind, Let's talk about two women, because we just talked yep. about the two men. Well, two women, they don't have a penis. They do have vaginas, but what can receive, what can a woman use to enter into another woman without getting a foreign object? They can use their tongue. They can shove their tongue up another woman's vagina, which again, it's involving the mouth, which is not a genital. And we're gonna get into that in another episode, what the mouth was designed for, but you're either sticking something up the vagina that should not be, whether it's a foreign uh, uh, object or whether it's your tongue um, or using, I don't know, fingers to stick up someone's anus or something like that to try to get pleasure. Again, all of these things is not how God designed for sex to go. It is a perversion. It is a substitute. It is a manipulation to try to simulate the origin of what sex really is but really you can't because you don't have all the parts and pieces to do so so you make do with whatever you have on your body and this is the thing the, the design is so perfect because they work together in conjunction mm -hmm. for an example both a penis and vagina create natural lubricant to be able to connect to have sex mm -hmm. man and man yeah a penis creates lubrication itself but an anus does not Come on. so now you have to add in and bring in lubricant and some other foreign yep. non part of the process to make this work same thing with a woman and a woman yes the vagina produces its own lubricant but the other woman ain't got nothing to put up in there exactly so the design by God is so perfect they are literally paired together perfectly they are supposed they work together they receive each other they operate in the same in the same way in the sense that there's no hiccup in the system because they were designed for it the moment you start trying to use a tool for something it wasn't designed for you got to start bringing another stuff to try to make it fit exactly and that's how you know it's wrong so let's continue let's go to leviticus chapter 20 
verse 13 in the Amplified Version. If a man lies intimately with a male as if he were a woman, both men have committed a detestable, perverse, unnatural act. They shall most certainly be put to death. Their blood is on them. One thing that I want to point out is when you understand that sex, as Donovan said earlier, its main reason was to create godly offspring. That was the reason that it was created. So now that you're getting a man and a man, well, that's not... You can't make anything out of that but you sin. You are perverting God's design. So that's even more so why it's disgu like it's disgusting. It's an abomination <laughs> to him. Like, and if you look at the historical context of this scripture, this is speaking to the people of Israel, but it still applies to us. Let's but he's saying that these people that are in this land that you're about to take over, this is why I'm removing them, because they have taken the thing that I've yeah. created and they've perverted it. This is why we're moving them from the land. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll see coming up in the future. I know we yeah. keep alluding to it. But <laughs> that means you got to come back. Exactly. That's what we're doing, teasing you. So uh, it's called God causes caused this abu an abuse of the body. Yeah. They mm -hmm. abuse their bodies. Because for a man to stick a penis up someone's anus or in someone's mouth, God says that's abusing the body. For women, again, to take a penis in their mouth or in their anus. It is abusing the body, sticking tongues in, in private areas that you shouldn't or receiving private areas in your mouth. God says, and we'll see this again, so you'll have to keep coming back throughout the series, cause this an abuse of the body. They're abusers of their bodies. And so when you look at it from that standpoint, Oral sex, anal sex, which there's a name for this called sodomy. And again, this is all coming in, in the future episodes. Mm -hmm. Sodomy is an abuse of the body. And I'll just stop there because we really going to get into it because there's a <laughs> lot I got to say. But we'll just stop there. Um, keep going. With so this it. is why the scripture says it's an unnatural act to what Trey said. The purpose of sex is to create children. That is the natural order of things. You using your body and perverting the design for it is unnatural because you can't participate in the purpose of sex. Mm -hmm. Two men cannot produce a child. Two women cannot produce a child. So sex for them, they are violating the purpose mm -hmm. of what sex was designed for under the marriage covenant, which two men cannot marry each other. Two women cannot marry each other. God does not honor that covenant because that was not his design, intention, his purpose, his reason, whatever word you want to use. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing in scripture is the Lord has a very fixed yes, he does. <laughs> definition and design of what sex is and is intended to be. All right. So let's look at Romans chapter one, verses 26 through 27 in the New King James Version. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. So, just so we understand this passage. God wasn't just like, well, they're going to do what they want to do, whatever. It was, they don't have a repentant heart and they're not trying to change. So I'm no longer wasting my time. No. You want to continue to act in this unclean, unholy, perverse way. And your heart is not towards me. I wash my hands. Of you. Exactly. It didn't, it's not that he stopped caring. It's just, I'm not about to waste time investing in someone who clearly does not want to change their ways and what they are participating in. Exactly. In addition to that, we go back to, it keeps talking about the natural use, the design. As Trey said earlier, the Lord designed it. He sets the definition. We can't change it to try to fit what I yeah. want to do. Right. So when we say that homosexuality is unnatural, we're not saying we hate homosexuals. Exactly. What we're saying is they are participating in an activity that was not designed by, for them by God. It was designed yeah. for a husband and a wife. 
husband having a penis, wife having a vagina, and that is sexual intercourse. Exactly. And it can't be changed, people. Yeah. So we got a lot to say as we talk about sex, but we're going to just pause the conversation here until the next episode because uh, we want to make sure in each episode we're focused on specific topics. And I know this has been <laughs> mind-blowing for a lot of people. And they're like, what are they talking about oral sex is not designed by God and what are they talking about with the homosexuality and what are they talking about with this and we got a lot more because there's a lot of people that say the marriage bed is undefiled that scripture and they use that scripture wrong so trust me we gonna be talking about a lot of stuff in this series on let's talk about sex but just to give you a preview of what the next episode is going to be about we are really going to get into non-sexual organs because we talked about the sexual organs in this episode being the genitals, which is only a penis and a vagina. But we want to focus on non-sexual organs that are being used as if they're sexual organs in sex. And what does God show those non-sexual organs with their original intent, purpose, and design were to see, is it wrong to use these as sexual organs or is it right? So with that, any final thoughts, words, before we wrap up this episode? Yep. We'll see y'all next time. All right. So yeah. So again, this is our 100th episode. Um, definitely do not watch this content and don't subscribe to the channel. Let's grow this community of like-minded disciples of Christ. If you really think that the content that you're partaking of and consuming is very beneficial, very helpful, giving you a lot of education, please share our videos with other people. We do have Bible lessons that we add onto our website, which is gatherinc.org. Go to our website, check out the Bible lessons tab. And there are a lot of lessons that we teach in our Monday night Bible classes that we've already posted on there, the PDFs. It has all the scriptures. Uh, if you want to join a live Bible study, we go live every Monday night, Eastern Standard Time, 635 to 8 p.m. On our Facebook page, which is Gather Ministries, go there and like our page and you'll get notified every Monday when we do go live. Um, but with that, we thank you as always for watching. We ask you to come back and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.